Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial about flocking. This time I'm going to show you how to create flocking using MASH. So in previous tutorials I showed you how to create flocking based on n particles and I'm starting to notice that this is what I used to use. However, uh, notice that I have a sky dome on. When I try to render it, it doesn't actually render which is really weird. And I try to do a lot of research on it, but I can't figure out why my end particles uh, are not working. And this is as simple as spheres and other things. So I'm not really sure why Arnold and the end particles aren't working. So I'm gonna move on and try MASH. Now, unfortunately, this also eats my computer. I won't be able to, oh, that worked actually. Usually it crashes my computer. Notice that I can't even rotate right now. But what I'm gonna do next is just gonna shut down Maya, open it up again, and I'm gonna show you guys how to create a MASH network that will actually render. And with this MASH network, we'll be able to complete our concept art turn into 3D. So I will be right back. Okay, so before we did all the end particles, we had a snapshot of our crane basically flapping away. So if you want to look at previous tutorials, it shows you how to do that. So I'm going to start off with this. The first thing we need to do is create our MASH network. So I'm going to grab all of these in order. So make sure you select these in order and just drag all the way to number 27. And under MASH, there's a tab called MASH. You can click on MASH. Otherwise, you can find it under FX, MASH, Create MASH Network. It's gonna be the same thing. So this is the first thing we get is a bunch of birds. And if I open up the attributes and I rewind and press play, you're gonna see that nothing is happening, which is perfectly normal. Give yourself a little bit extra time so that we can watch the animation in a second. So there's a lot of tabs up here. And the first one we probably wanna to touch on is random. So click on random and then click on add random node. And what that does is kind of distribute the models a little bit. So what I start off with is just kind of spread these out a little bit so there's a little bit of space between the characters. And again, you can just click on the mesh and just click on the tabs until you find the tab that you need. And there's the random one. So again, this is a really good way to kind of spread it out. Now, if notice that there is no, there isn't a scale. If you wanted to scale, what I would recommend is actually going in and uh, press R and just kind of scaling the bird down if you wanted to. So that gives it a little bit more space between birds. So still you'll notice that there is no animation on the birds. Let's go back to our MASH network here and we're gonna click on MASH1 and the next thing we wanna do is create something called ID. So right here, it's uh, this little icon right here, click on that and say add ID node. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna randomize the, the frames. So now what I wanna do is call cycle and it automatically knows that there's 27 uh, cycles. So now when I press play, you're gonna see that we have this bunch of birds flapping their wings. So, so far we've got our little character to actually do their thing, which is awesome. How do we get this to look like it actually flies around? Well, lucky for us, select your MASH network again. We have something called flight, which is fantastic because that's exactly what we need. So we're gonna click on flight and we're gonna click on add flight node. Now, it does this really weird thing where it sucks them all into this one spot. But when you zoom out, you're gonna see that we have a outer, like a green circle, then a bluish circle on the outside, something along those colors. And this shows us the gravity effect on it. Let's press play and see what we get. So we're gonna press play and they take off and you'll see that uh, the gravity's not, it's too, uh, not strong enough because they're flying off into the air. Let's see what we can do to control our flight. So the first thing I wanna do is say, reduce the maximum speed. So right now they're just taking off like a bullet. So I'm gonna reduce my maximum speed. So I'm gonna rewind and press play. And now I have a little bit more, a cont uh, little bit more control over what's happening to the, to my birds. They're still kind of flying off into, uh, but at least now they're kind of staying close. So let's go ahead and reduce the maximum speed maybe minimum speed. So now they're relatively staying in place or at least a little closer than before, which is better. And you'll notice that as the sphere gets closer to them, it starts to bring them back in. Let's go ahead and type a little lower. I just, they're going a little fast. Let's grab the steering force and I'm gonna reduce it. Press play. 
So there's a lot of tutorials when it comes to how to use flights and uh, a bunch of other things. So I just want to make let you know that I'm not an expert in this. I'm just uh, trying to get it to work so that these guys actually render. And by the way, that issue that I had before, I no problems here. My little flock of birds actually render, which is awesome. All right, so how do we get these little birds to actually stay aligned? Because right now they just kind of explode out of this sphere, except for this one random magical bird in the center, which is kind of weird. Kind of got stuck there. Um, so we want to tell it to orient itself. So let's go ahead and again, we're going to grab that mesh network and uh, we're going to use something called orient. So let's click on that and said add orient joint or orient, sorry, just orient. And now when we rewind and play, you're going to notice that they oriented a little backwards, which is hilarious, but not really what we want. So let's try flipping the axes. So now the birds are relatively going kind of this is the center and going out. So what we want to do is say don't aim at the target. What we want to do is aim at the velocity. So let's go ahead and choose velocity if you want to press play. And the birds are doing something weird. So I'm going to take off, flip axis, rewind and play. And now I'm going to start tweaking around to try to figure out how can I get these birds to actually face the right way. Uh, it's kind of funny watching these guys <laughs> fly off sideways. <laughs> so in my opinion, end particles are actually a lot easier to use because uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, with this one, I get some interesting effects. So especially when it seems to be coming from here. So let me see if I can mute the rotations. And again, I'm just kind of exploring. And there we go. Once we get the mute the rotations, they're now uh, still flip facing the wrong way, but at least they're not... Um, backwards, upside down, and who knows what else. So let's find that mesh uh, flight mode again. Uh, let me see where to go. That's orient. Oh, I think I was playing with orient. Um, let's go ahead and maybe flip the axes and see what happens there. Rewind. Don't do that. Rewind and play. And then let's try X. And then, of course, I like to try different ones. Let's try Z. So this one has some of them facing the direction that I want it to. Another part is taking a look at the distribute. So right now, if you select MASH, and again, just kind of go through all the little tabs. One of them is called Distance X, and it's called Distribute. Let's go ahead and bring that in a little bit so the birds are not so far away from each other. So now they actually kind of remain closer. So that's more of what I'm looking for is, other than the fact that they're facing the wrong way, uh, this is something that I really want. So around frame 78 is about the time that I want all my birds to be flying around. Now I gotta figure out why they're going, uh, why they're going in all types of directions, but um, but that's basically what, uh, it's gonna help keep the birds a little bit closer to each other. So what's fun about MASH is that it's got a little, every, every single one of these little MASH networks has a little bit of a, like a little switch. And if you wanted to see what it looks like without, for example, random, you can just turn that off. You're not deleting it, you're just turning it off. And then we can see the effect that the random has on it. So notice that they're pretty, pretty flat. Let's go ahead and turn this back on and then you can see the difference. So it kind of randomizes the location of these guys. Okay, so now that we have something that works relatively, let's take a look at our object again or our flight and then find the orient node. And what I did was flip it back to Y and all these are checked off. And if I rewind and play, they're still, they're kind of facing the right way, except that it looks like they're flying backwards. So what I'm going to do is grab my snapshot and just like what we did with rotation, uh, with scale, we're going to rotate this so that the objects are actually facing the right way. So now we're going to rewind and play. And now at least our objects are flying away and it looks like the characters are actually facing the correct way. So I'm going to kind of rotate this a little bit. If it lets me, if it likes it, there we go. And now we're getting something that looks like our characters or our objects are actually flying around, which is good. So now they're flying back. Whoops, not enough time. Let's go ahead and increase the time. So they're kind of spreading out 
and then it starts to be they're starting to get draw back there's a little dance going on over there I'm not sure what's happening there um, but we're getting some interesting and flocking results so what I want is to be able to capture this type of flock and add it into the um, the render so this is what it looks like right now. It's not perfect, but I'm hoping that it kind of gives you the, at least the viewer, the concept of the scene. So I'm gonna render this out again. And we have a uh, kind of like uh, just flocks. And the nice thing is, is that they render. Rewind and play. And there you go. They're gonna be drawn back. There you go, and they flip back. And then I have a section that I might want to use for rendering. All right, so now that I have this type of uh, look, which is great, I'm going to go ahead and combine it with my uh, other renders. I will see you in the next tutorial where I will put it all together and we'll grab this mash network that actually renders and place it into the already lit scene. And then that way we can go ahead and get this piece finished. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on mash and how to create flocks. So thanks everybody. And I will see you next time. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com for free eBooks, uh, tutorials, and so much more uh, downloads and so much more and again don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also click on the little bell because uh, it really encourages me to continue making more of these so thank you everybody for watching and I will see you next time